Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and it's the eighth day of Christmas projects. I've caught a bit of a cold, so I'm running a bit behind on getting these projects out, but we'll get them all out before the holiday. What I've got to show you today is a super fun, super fast, and I mean super fast, mini album that you can make up lickety split if you need a last minute album to give as a gift. Here I've got one done out of Doodlebug Papers. It is a matchbook style album with a hard chipboard cover and inside there are pockets that hold 4x6 um, tags in them. This one I've done where I've taken a zigzag um, Tim Holtz edge um, die to where I've cut the, the edge of the pockets and then I've just folded over the little corners or the points so they look like little elf hats. There were die cuts that came with this paper collection and I used those to make this a super fast to put together album. I've also beaded the ribbon binding on here to give as a spacer. These are little pony beads that you can get at most craft stores, usually in the kids section. So these little pony beads then give spacing to allow for some of your embellishments that may add thickness to an album. So again, super, super, uber duper quick to get this done. So let me show you how to do it, but I got to cough first. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay. What you're going to start out with is here I have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. If you're going to be doing any edge treatment, you may need to extend the height of your um, envelope or your pages, your pocket pages. So this one was done with five by eight and a half. When I did this one, I extended it by about an inch to allow for these little hats to go on that edge. And what you're then going to do is you're just going to score it at an two and one eighth inch in from each side so that when this folds over they just kiss up against each other. You just want those butting up, no overlap. You're also going to score a three quarter inch up from the bottom edge because you're going to want to fold that. That's going to be your hinge and bound edge right there. So once you have these folded, if you want to do some sort of edge punch treatment, go ahead and get that done first and then fold this in. You're then going to cut out of pattern paper a 4 inch by 4 inch um, mat. Now if you've extended the length of your page at all, you will need to adjust that dimension. We then take this 4 by 4 piece, we will attach it down. You'll also cut a second 4 by 4 piece that's going to go onto the back side as well. So we attach that down, we'll flip it over, and that holds it all closed. So you don't have to have that overlap because your photo mat is what's going to hold that into a pocket. That's why you just want that butting up nicely together. So we're going to attach this to the back side. Then this paper collection by Cosmo Cricut had some cute little um, pieces that you cut apart that were little journaling spots. So I'm adding those to each page. I decided to do this one on this side. So add some journaling because then on our tag on the um, that slip into the pocket, that's where I'll have my photos is on those photo mat tags. This one's going to go, I think, right here. There's a little journaling spot. I then have a four by six inch mat that I've then added pattern paper to, and I again repeated that same um, punch on the edge. So then that just slips down inside my pocket. It only goes as far as that joint. I haven't glued that close, but when I bind it, it'll stop right there. So that gives me my page. I've got the rest of my pages put together as well. The only thing I've left to do on this page is to go ahead and punch my holes for my binding. I'm going to use this one as my guide piece. So I will go ahead punch my holes. If I can do this without seeing, of course, there is. I forgot to clean this out before I punch the hole. Sorry about this, guys. Those of you who watch my Ustream shows knows that's one of my bugaboos. 
gets caught up inside there. So I've got my holes punched now so I can be ready to make my cover so then I can get my binding done. So stick those back in there. That one back in there. So then I have my pages ready to bind. And I get my <laughs> tag in there. So now I'm ready to go ahead and make my cover. Now I've got some of this prepped and I had a lot of people asking about doing a wrapped cover. I do have a video that I'm going to try to get up here shortly that actually shows um, how to make a wrap cover, but let me run you through this one real quick. You're going to cut your pieces out of chipboard. Now this one piece, the larger pieces here and out on this end are four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And because this is a matchbook style, there's actually three pieces involved in the spine. So you can see where those joints happen. So you've kind of got this little channel that is where the binding happens. And so we've got a four and a half by three quarter inch on each side here, and then a one and three quarter by the four and a half inches for our actual spine. So there's actually three parts to the spine and then your front and back cover. So I have attached all those chipboard pieces down to my paper. I've added a seam right here at the center and I'll cover that out, up after I've put this all together. I do like to run a strong adhesive tape, in this case it's score tape, that I like to run around then the outside and I always make sure I have a strong adhesive tape or glue on each side of all the joints. You'll have a lot pro less problem with it cracking at those joints. The other thing that you want to do is when you place these down is you want to make sure your gap is at least two thicknesses of your chipboard. So what I've done, uh, I've taken some of my scrap chipboard glued those two pieces together and I use that as a shim when I'm placing my pieces to make sure that my gap is at least that thickness. You don't want it less. If it's a little bit more, not a problem, but you don't want it less and you'll have a lot less problems with cracking at those fold points because it creates a lot less stress then on your paper. Okay, so what the other thing that I'm going to do is here at the corners to take away some of the bulk I'm chamfering those off at an angle. I can then peel up all of this score tape and then I can start wrapping the edge. Now the edge that I'm going to be wrapping extends outside of the chipboard by approximately a half an inch. You can make it a little bit more than that. I don't recommend going narrower than the half inch. So then what we'll do is we'll just go around and wrap th that around, adhering it to the adhesive. I sometimes use my table surface to get that edge kind of up and started to wrap around. You want to make it nice and snug up to the edge of your chipboard as you wrap that around. And you just continue all the way around. I like on these long runs to just kind of roll it on my desk surface to get that started. So give it a good rub down to make sure it's adhered nicely to the tape. Then as you see, I've got the tape on each side of my joints. I've got my what I call the lining pieces set to go here so that we can attach. If you notice, I may cut those to where they're about a quarter of an inch smaller in each direction so we have about an eighth inch all the way around. I do along this edge where I'm going to have a seam, I am going to go ahead and just run a bit of my ATG tape which isn't quite strong enough to go at these joints. So you want to make sure you're using a really nice strong adhesive tape at our chipboard joint places so that it gets a nice adhesion but it's perfect for at this point so I'm going to set it right I gotta run my tape all the way around until I'm on cold medication so strong tape at the joints just regular kind of adhesive 
for going around the edge of the actual paper. So allow for that eighth inch space around the outside. I can go ahead and peel this up as well. And then we'll attach this one. Then our next step is we need to punch our holes in our cover so we can then assemble the binding system. So I'm going to line that up. Okay, so then I've got it lined. So now I'm going to add those joints very slowly and gently fold up at the joints. Now on the narrower joints, we're going to want that to fold backwards. So we want to fold it this way. And always do your foldings slowly, gently, and help it along that first time to crease it a little bit. Don't over fold it. Oh, I just folded that one the wrong way. There we go. That's the one that wants to fold backwards. And that one folds forward. So you can see how we then have that channel. Now where we're going to want to punch our holes is in this section right here. So what we'll want to do is take one of our pages, use it as, see where my joint is here? The joint is there. So I want to place it centered, placing it on that joint, and mark my holes. I will punch those then with my crocodile. If you don't have that, a drill or a punch and all will work. But we're going to want to punch this then. Sorry if I get off camera here a little bit. I'm going to go this direction. So just punch those holes in. one. So I've got my holes punched in there nicely. So now I'm ready to take a nice long piece of ribbon from the back side. I'm going to thread it through. The two ends. If you, you cut your ribbon to a point, it makes it a little bit easier to thread through. Pull that through, make it nice and neat on the back side. Make it so it's close to being even. Then I'm going to thread on a bead, a runaway bead, onto each of the ribbons. Then I'm going to thread a page. And I will continue. alternating the page and a bead until I have all of my pages on. I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and film me threading all of these pages on here. But we just continue threading all these on there. Whoops. As it runs away. And then you do another bead. Now I don't think I'm going to thread all of these on here. So I'll show you how you then finish this off. Just thread one more bead on here. Then once you have all your pages, you'll thread this through your cover. As I said, I'm not going to put all the pages in for right now, but I can show you how to finish this off. So then you'll bring this through to the front 
you will tie this once, but you'd want to put all your pages in obviously. You'll go ahead and tie this nice and taut into a bow. Then you can go ahead and decorate your cover. I have a little title piece that's going to go on here. And then I also have a spine piece to cover up my seam. But that's how fast, how easy this album is to make. Is you're just threading those pages on with that ribbon and, thread and the bead binding so that you end up with a finished look that has spacing. So if you like to make chunky albums with lots of embellishments, or if you need one super fast, how fast is this? I mean, I, I can put one of these together in less than two hours if you're using a paper that already has die cuts and that sort of thing. Super fast, super quick, super easy. So hopefully you'll enjoy making one of these beaded matchbook mini albums. And I thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a bunch.